So, I just got a referral for a school-age boy who is exhibiting language issues. And right now, I don't have any room in my schedule because I'm so busy, but I feel with your experience and expertise, you will be just fine treating him. Yeah, I, would, I mean, I would love to gain more experience with this population. Mm -hmm. uh, since I'm an SLPA, am I, is it acceptable for me to do that? I mean, yeah, I mean, I feel like you're really good. You know what you're doing. You've been working for me for a long time, so. And, but the first thing you'll need to do is meet with the client and his parents in order to gain some background information. And then you can assess them from there. But yeah, I feel like you'll do great. Okay, that sounds good. I mean, I'll just ask you questions as, as I go if I yeah, have any, no, but I feel comfortable doing that. Good, you will do great. Thank you. All right, Bobby, if you want to come back with me and have a seat right there, I'm just going to give you this test here, and um, if you want to just follow my prompt and we'll be done shortly, it'll go really quick. So I'm going to start by asking you, what is this? Microphone. Good job. What is this? Ruler. Good job, Bobby. What is this? A book. Good job. You did so good, Bobby. We're all done for today. This video demonstrates a violation of the ASHA Code of Ethics, Principle 1, Rule D. Individuals shall not misrepresent the credentials of aides, assistants, technicians, support personnel, students, research interns, clinical fellows, or any other under their supervision and they shall not inform those they serve professionally of the name, role, and professional credentials of persons providing services. This is a violation because the SLPA is not trained to assess and treat patients on their own. I noticed you got a referral for a school-aged boy with language concerns, and I see that your schedule is pretty full. I was wondering if there's any way that I could step in and maybe assess and treat this client? Mm -hmm. I have. I've been so busy and I appreciate you wanting to step in and help, but since you're an SLPA, that would be unethical since you don't have the credentials and you technically can't treat patients on your own. But I appreciate that you would want to, but unfortunately you can't. Yeah, I understand and thank you for being honest with me. Um, please let me know if there's any other ways I can get involved yeah, with yeah, the training that I do have. Yeah, most definitely. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and assess them, but you're more than welcome to observe if you want to. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. All right, Bobby. You want to take a seat over here? And how old are you? I'm 10. You're 10. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a series of pictures, and I just want you to tell me what it is. So, what is this? It's a microphone. Good. And what is this? A ruler. Great. And what about this? Reading a book. Good. Wallet. Good job. Okay, I think we're done for today, but great job, Bobby. Video. The SLP and SLPA effectively carried out their roles and responsibilities when given a new referral. Both professionals are practicing ethically by following the ASHA Code of Ethics. The SLP administered the assessment and did not allow the SLPA to assess the client. 